Oh man, here goes another one. Like DJ Khaled, another one. Welcome back to Brain Flow TV slash Hot Topics TV. If you've never been here before, just go ahead and hit that subscribe button, please. And let's get right into this topic. Diddy, again, is being sued by another model who says that she was drugged and sexually assaulted by him in 2003. We just covered the white chick version of this because a white chick has entered the chat and she has her own story outlined. See our last video that we uploaded pertaining to the topic. P. Diddy being sued by all these different women. They are Harvey Weinsteining Diddy. But Harvey Weinstein got his conviction overturned so we don't know what might happen for diddy in the future let me say this i just got finished last night watching a documentary series type of event on tv that's it was it was titled the downfall of p diddy or something like that so you know how they had surviving r kelly the downfall of p diddy man listen Anyhow, let's get into the details of what this woman says happened to her at the hands of Brother Love, Diddy, P. Diddy, Puffy, Sean Puffy Combs, whatever you want to call him. Diddy is being sued by a model who says that he drugged and sexually assaulted her back in 2003. We are in 2024. That's about 21 years ago. Crystal McKinney was 22 years old at the time, says that she sustained substantial and lifetime injuries as a result of that incident. Well, goddamn, I got to get into this to figure out what these lifetime effects are. Lifetime injuries, she said. Now, one thing I must say before I even get started is this. I realize that everybody that's coming after Puffy or Diddy or P. Diddy, nobody is asking for him to get prison time, jail time. These are all civil suits where they are seeking monetary money payout instead of taking it to a criminal court and seeking for him to be put behind bars. Now, I think if you rape somebody, spiked somebody's drink, took advantage of them, did these kind of things that he's accused of doing, then you deserve to go to prison. So I wouldn't want your money if I was a victim. I would want to see you behind bars, and that's the only way I would think that justice was served. But in Diddy's case, nobody is asking for him to go to jail or prison. Everybody wants a slice of the pie. $30 million here, $20 million there. I'll take five over here. Let me get two and I'm good. I'll walk away like everybody is coming for their money. I'm just saying that's the way it is. Now, Sean Diddy Combs, in this particular suit we're about to talk about, he is being sued by a model who says that the rapper drugged her and then sexually assaulted her in 2003. In court documents that were obtained by Scripps News, Crystal McKinney alleges that she sustained substantial and lifetime injuries as a result of the incident. McKinney met Puffy, Sean P. Diddy Combs, when she was just 22 years old after being invited to attend a Men's Fashion Week event at a place called Kipriani downtown in new york city in 2003 puffy p diddy he had been representing his brand which was top of the line at the time you're talking about 2003 the sean john brand was booming right if you didn't have a pair of Sean John boxers or if you didn't have some Sean John pants or shirt or something says Sean John, then you weren't into what was happening at the time. A fashion designer who invited her to the event referred to in the paperwork of the lawsuit as the designer. They didn't give up the person's name. 
They just said the designer. The designer worked to ensure that McKinney would look really, really good for the occasion so that Puffy or Diddy would find her super attractive. This is what it says in the lawsuit. The designer told McKinney that she would introduce her to Puffy because she knows him like that. But you got to look good though. At the dinner event, it says that Diddy made a very public display of coming on to McKinney in a sexually suggestive manner, which continued throughout the dinner event. I don't know. Uh, licking his lips, maybe winking at her, uh, motioning, saying sexual stuff, you know, motioning with the lips. Like you got to lip read it because the words aren't coming out, but he's saying some sexually suggestive things kind of thing. Documents then claims that Diddy continued complimenting the model's looks throughout the night. At this point, I'm saying to myself, well, I guess the designer did what the designer was supposed to do or what the designer said she was going to do. I'm going to make you look really good so you're attractive to him. And then I'm going to introduce you to him because I got pulled like that. Well, she dressed her up, took her to Diddy like a present, and he loved the present that he received. He told her that he had power in the industry and could help advance her career. This is where a lot of it starts. Combs gave his phone number, according to the lawsuit, he gave his phone number to the model as a measure of good faith that he would keep his word. That's what the lawsuit says. You know, people like Puffy and Diddy, whoever you want to call them back in them days, they don't give, even today, they don't just give out their phone number just to anybody who they just met, especially their personal phone number. Maybe I'll give you an a, a office number an assistant number, something like that, a website, but definitely not their personal number. So he gave his number to her as a measure of good faith. Listen, this is my personal number. Hold me to my word, right? I'm going to make some big things happen for you in this industry. But the rapper continued to be flirtatious throughout the evening and at times bordering layering according to the lawsuit. I'm going to have to go look up what layering is. He also repeatedly kept filling her glass with wine. Layering, I want you, the audience who's listening, to look up L-E-E-R-I-N-G and put in the comment section what you found the definition of layering to be. Bordering layering. He also repeatedly kept filling her glass with wine. Drink up, drink up, more and more. Come on, have a drink, 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 right? Now, at this point, I'm saying to myself, I'm 22 years old. I get invited to a party. Homie over here is filling my glass, filling my glass, filling my glass. I don't want any more to drink. I think I'm a grown-ass person who could say I'm good. I don't want any more to drink. I'm buzzing right now. I feel all right. I don't want to exceed my limit. So I don't understand how people are like, he kept filling my glass and filling my glass, and I want to sue him today for it. But you, you you knew what you were doing. You kept drinking past your limit, right? Okay, well, I ain't going to blame the victim. I'm going to just go on with the details of the story. So it says that later on that evening, after the event, Diddy insisted that McKinney visit his studio. She said, I felt pressured. I felt pressured. She would be in the presence of others rather than alone with him in a personal residence. I felt pressured that she would be in the presence of others rather than alone with him in a personal residence. Combs and several other men were gathered together when she arrived. An associate of Combs asked her if she's ever smoked weed. Soon as she got there, she showed up where he told her to show up at. And when she got there, the homie said, you ever smoke weed? And when she said yes, he replied to her, you ain't never smoked no weed like this before. This is according to the lawsuit. I don't know if that would mean that weed was laced 
or if it's just some strong bombazi that she probably ain't never had before, that they're rich and they have privilege to some other lights, you know what I mean, to some of that, I don't know. Anyways, Combs pressured her, according to the paperwork, it says that he pressured her to continue consuming more alcohol and now smoking marijuana with it. Even when she said, I'm good, I'm cool, I had enough, I don't want any more. Quote unquote, it felt as if she was floating, says the lawsuit. Well, that's how people feel when they smoke marijuana and drink alcohol. You feel like you're floating, you're high, you're drunk. Now, while she was very intoxicated, the paperwork says that Diddy made her go into a bathroom with him. In the bathroom, he forced himself on her and began kissing her without her consent. It says that he then shoved her hand down his crotch before commanding her to suck it, suck it. McKinney, according to the paperwork, says she refused to do that. But Combs pushed her head down onto his fullest and forced her to perform oral on him. Combs then brought McKinney back into the studio area and while feeling physically ill, she lost consciousness. The lawsuit says... It says that she then woke up, and when she woke up, she found herself in a taxi heading back to the designer's apartment. Check it out. It wasn't no Ubers back then. It wasn't no Lyft back then. We had taxis and yellow cabs and whatnot. Well, she passed out. He did what he did, and when she woke up, she was in a yellow cab or a taxi heading back to the designer who got her dressed and told her she was going to introduce her to Puffy, but she got to dress her nicely so he finds her super attractive. Designer did her job, dropped her off. I feel like she, the, the, the designer dropped, dropped him off a package for the evening, right? If the story is true. Now, as her consciousness returned, McKinney said she realized that she had been sexually assaulted by Combs, says the lawsuit. She felt humiliated and she felt traumatized without recourse. Now, that means, you know, you just go do me like this and throw me in a cab while I'm unconscious. You don't wait till I wake up so we could talk to each other so I could say what happened and why you did that and I didn't want you to do this or maybe I do want it, but like no recourse. Just used and thrown out like garbage. Now, due to what she says unfolded, McKinney had kept her clothes from that night, hung in a plastic bag, wrapped in her closet ever since then. Follow, following the incident, McKinney's opportunities in the industry dwindled and she realized that she had been blackballed. According to the documents, she suffered severe depression and anxieties. She even attempted suicide sometime around 2004 because the career that she dreamt about was not going to take off because of this one encounter with somebody called P. Diddy, who was very powerful in the industry and definitely a gatekeeper or close to the gatekeepers. And he was pulling strings from behind the scenes to make sure that nobody would hire her. To make sure that she could not get work anywhere in the industry. I guess because she didn't give it up willingly. And she wasn't willing to play the games the way he wanted it played. According to the paperwork. She became addicted to drugs and alcohol. Which she turned to as a coping mechanism. McKinney was later married. From 2006 to 2010. But her marriage fell apart due to trauma from that assault is what the paperwork says to this very day mckinney continues to experience bouts of depression anxiety 
body image issues, feelings of worthlessness, and intimacy issues because of Combs assault, the lawsuit says. The model is seeking a unspecified amount of money and damages. The lawsuit comes just days after videos emerged of Sean Puffy Combs assaulting his ex-girlfriend Cassie Ventura in a 2016 incident. Ventura is among a number of others who have come forward with lawsuits against Puffy for abuse, sexual assault, drug allegations, etc., etc. And they just keep on coming out the freaking woodworks. Listen, this video right here, just giving you details of another lawsuit and another person who's giving their encounters and seeking monetary damages, compensation from Sean P. Diddy Combs or Diddy or whatever you want to call him. My question to you is this, listening to this, and I want you to leave this in the comment section below. Do you think that Diddy is going to prison eventually? Or do you think that this is going to all blow over and he is going to resurface victorious in some way, shape, or form? Leave your comments in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about this one. And I'll catch you on the next video. It's Hot Topics TV slash Brain Flow TV. And you already know, if the topic is hot, we're on it. I'm out. Peace.